Thank you so much. Honorable Minister, Admiral Dhawan Sahib, in fact, we have been together on many uh, such occasions talking about blue economy. President MEDC, my co-name Anup Kumar, uh, Deepak Ji. In fact, my, uh, the earlier speakers uh, have already, in fact, set the stage for what we are going to discuss as part of BlueCon. Uh, I was told I should really uh, explain a bit about what this task force, which the FICI has set up on blue economy, is trying to do and achieve. Uh, my association, in fact, uh, with oceans, not so much with blue economy, goes back to um, the earlier, earlier years of my career when I was a young officer traveling from place to place. During those years, I, I witnessed how the oceans can be a major asset for a society if we maintain them well. I have seen how a well-managed boat can sustain a whole town. I have seen how well-managed fishing can sustain whole towns. And we all know how well-managed hydrocarbons have sustained countries and continents. So that's the worth, that's the worth of oceans that we are looking at. In fact, the story is old, in fact, as Deepak Ji mentioned, why oceans, in fact? Why we are talking about oceans so much? Believe me, when I was a young officer, I hardly went to a conference talking about oceans, other than the maritime security. We were not talking about ocean economy or blue economy that much. You see, the, the mankind, in fact, uh, the mankind has always been looking for sources of growth, economic growth. It's a very simple relationship. Growth brings prosperity, and equitable prosperity brings peace, and peace brings further growth, and the cycle goes on. We as human society have done this over and over again, starting from, I can go back to the ancient times when we started domesticating, domesticating crops and, and cattle. I can come down to the Green Revolution, I can come down to the colonial period. We were trying to always find a way to grow, sometimes equitably, sometimes not so, equitably. But in the modern times, if you start from the Industrial Revolution, we went through different phases of Industrial Revolution coming to now, what we call the fourth Industrial Revolution, which is basically driven by technology. It's going to be a technology-driven stage of economic growth. What next, in fact? Because this is more we, 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 more technology we know, more complex the platform becomes. What are we looking at? Are we looking at Internet of Things for growth? Are we looking at nano applications for growth? Are we looking at biotechnology for growth? What is that we are looking at? And the whole concept of blue economy is that we are looking at so many things, but what about ocean? The oceans which have served humanity for so long, they have provided food, they have provided means of transport, they have provided means of recreation, so many things. Now, we have always dealt with ocean. It's a known entity. We are not dealing with an unknown entity, and it is 
three-fourth of the Earth's surface. Almost 90% of the biota, as we call it, resides in ocean. Can we look at, at the ocean as a source of next cycle of growth? If you ask me, I simply have no doubt. There are various estimates of ocean wealth, some of them going up to an asset value of something about $24 trillion. And I think in my assumption, this is an underestimation. The ocean assets are much more than this. There are estimates which say the annual value addition of ocean related activities is something about two and a half trillion dollars. If you ask me, this is an underestimation. I was looking at just a couple of sectors because at the end of the day, I mentioned the idea is to carry prosperity to people. Just look at, for example, the, what you mentioned about fisheries. Now, fisheries directly and indirectly today provide about 300 million jobs. And according to the latest report, according to the latest report, in the next 10 years, in the next 10 years, there is going to be a supply demand deficit of something about 30 million metric tons. Now, somebody will have to do it, isn't it? Somebody will have to do it. If I look at tourism, for example, both downstream, upstream, the total value of tourism assets and the market value is today about eight trillion dollars. It's a mind-boggling figure, eight trillion dollars. And by 2028, the estimate is that the size of this market is going to be 11.4 trillion dollars which means in about 10 years' time, we are looking at an expansion of more than $4 trillion worth of economic activity. Add to this, add to this now, shipping, ports, hydrocarbons, renewable energy, biotechnology, add to it all those sectors, you can imagine what we're looking at. Now, if that is what we are looking at, I'm sure you will ask me this question. Why are we worried about a good news? It's a good news that we can do so much with the oceans, but then why are we worried? Why are we talking about blue economy? Why are we talking about the measures? In fact, the oceans, while we can, we can use the ocean assets forever, but the oceans are also asking a question back to us. Ocean is asking, okay, fine, I'll sustain you, but what about my own health? The ocean says, I am also suffering because of overexploitation. There are issues of pollution, there are issues of acidification, there are issues of loss of ocean biodiversity, there are issues of global warming. And believe me, in case the ocean health is not improved, its impact will not be seen only in the ocean. Its impact will be seen on the land. So we have to really, really pay attention to the ocean health. If we go with the ocean health, ocean is an asset. But if we do not care about the ocean health, ocean would be a threat. I'm sure Admiral Saab, you will agree with me, right? When the oceans turn on us because of their bad health, I'm sure we will not have the resources to fight. So let's, let's be prepared and not challenge the ocean. Let's work with them and not against them. And that is what Blue Economy is all about. That is what Blue Economy is all about. Can we work with the environment and not against the environment. In fact, I'm sure you have all heard about something called Earth's Overshoot Day. Every year, the Earth's Overshoot Day is being preponed. And last year, the Earth's Overshoot Day was in August. Can you imagine August is 
the eighth month in a year, which means we exploited, we finished, we exhausted the Earth's renewable resource in just about eight months of a year. So we borrowed four months from future assets of nature, and this cannot go on. And that is why, that is why the whole issue of sustainability and blue economy. Now the next question is, who will do it? I have been going to various conferences, they discuss the science of sustainability, they talk about the legality of, uh, of sustainability and all aspects, but I don't see business there. Now if you really ask me if these are the opportunities and challenges, who will do it? At the end of the day, it's the business who will have to do it. Are we engaging the business into this process of discourse? My answer is so far no. And that was the reason that with FIKI, we set up this task force on blue economy, which will in fact integrate the business community with this whole discourse about sustainability and blue economy. And as a first step, in fact, this task force produced this knowledge paper on blue economy, it's purely meant for business community. That ocean and sustainability means business, but we have to be careful, not at the expense of the ocean health or at the expense of environment. We are now working on the second phase of the knowledge paper, and the second phase will clearly bring out will clearly bring out the sectoral opportunities available to the business. We will, deter, we, will, we will bring out what is available, what to do, how to do, who can do it, both nationally and through international cooperation. I would request the business, please join this process, because my worry is that the time to the time to work sustainability is today, tomorrow will be late. And you are, you are the agents of that action. And if you not integrate with this process, the battle will be lost. And I'm sure we would not want to lose this battle. Deepak, you mentioned about terrorism. I'm sure we do not want to lose battle against terrorism, but at the same time, we do not want to lose this battle of sustainable development. With these words, I wish you all the best. I'll see you through the conference in different se sections, and I wish the conference all the best. Thank you very much.